And now, Veep Thoughts by Kamala Harris. Everything is in context. My mother used to, she would give us a hard time sometimes and she would say to us, I don't know what's wrong with you young people. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? (laughs) You exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. This has been Veep Thoughts by Kamala Harris. Get all the Studos America merch you could ever want at studosmerch.com. If you use the code Stu10, just a secret for you. Even if you're buying stuff from the other shows on The Blaze, that code will work. It'll get you 10% off the entire order. Uh, check us out also at YouTube, youtube.com slash America. We've got this show, we've got comedy skits, we've got the live news reaction, and so much more. Just subscribe and hit the bell so you don't uh, so you know what's going on, and you get notified when we're doing uh, something new. I think we're going to go live tomorrow after this Brett Baer interview. We'll talk about it here in a little bit. Dave Landau is going to join us. He's going to help us figure out how to be a man for Kamala Harris, uh, probably and give us also advice on how to kill ourselves afterward. Uh, Joe Biden is having problems with women, as usual. I'll let you know about the troubles in paradise with AOC and Nancy Pelosi. But we start by doing Kamala panic. It does feel like there's a little Kamala panic setting in right now. Uh, You know, feelings don't win elections, but it does sort of feel like that's the direction we're moving right now. And we have some uh, pretty big developments in that world because I could tell you and I will show you the data like I always do. We'll do some, you know, give you a pulse cast update coming up later on the show. We'll go through all that stuff. And the data doesn't necessarily tell the story completely yet. It doesn't say, hey, Donald Trump's definitely going to win this election or anything. It says it's going to be a really close election. We'll give you the details in a little bit. But. What I will say is there's something else that's telling me that Kamala Harris is losing this election. Let me start with this. Joe Rogan is going to uh, interview Donald Trump. Donald Trump reveals he'll be appearing on Joe Rogan's podcast, calls him a good guy. They've gone back and forth a little bit over the years. It's good to see that happening. A lot of people had asked me, like, hey, like, what? Trump's doing all of these interviews in the circle around uh, Joe Rogan. Why isn't he getting on Rogan? Doesn't he want to? Does he not like him? Like, what's the situation? And um, uh, it's a situation where... You know, you have a, 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 a guy who is uh, the biggest podcaster in the world and is central to this place where the election seems to be being fought, which is younger males. That seems to be a huge focus for both of the campaigns. Now, Trump and his campaign, I think, is at least the campaign. You know, Trump, uh, I don't know. I think he I think he likes doing these. And I think that's the, the best thing about them. You, you hear him doing these podcast type interviews. He seems to have fun and enjoy them. The campaign, I think, recognizes, you know, there, there are certain places where Donald Trump excels, other places maybe not as much. And you, know, you put him in some uh, you know, hour long interview with New York, the New York Times. Maybe it's not as successful as the way that, uh, you know, a J.D. Vance handles that. We covered that yesterday. The, the campaign seems to understand Trump's strengths and weaknesses and, and are playing this, I think, really, really well right now. On the other hand, is the Kamala Harris situation. Uh, Harris could also join Joe Rogan podcast in Hunt for Male Votes, sources say. Now, this one's not locked down yet, but first of all, if I may encourage Kamala Harris to do this, she should. She should definitely do a three-hour um, a podcast interview with uh, somebody who's going to just like go into God knows what drug references and I, who knows where it goes. It's always an adventure uh, with Joe Rogan. And like this strikes me as the exact type of thing she should not be doing. Now, she wants young male votes. And obviously there's lots of people who listen to the Joe Rogan podcast. So you can see the, the, the back of the envelope math that would get you to thinking you should do this interview. But I assure you, uh, you should not if you're Kamala Harris, because, you know, the more she talks, the more people don't like her. And to get her on a two or three hour interview with Joe Rogan, uh, when you're not going to know where it's going, that it seems like a terrible idea. Now, Rogan, 
has in the past endorsed, for example, Bernie Sanders for president. He's not necessarily a hardcore conservative, but still, this is really, really risky and puts her in, you know, it puts her in positions. She's not fun. She doesn't seem to have any fun in these interviews. And she doesn't seem to be uh, uh, capable of joking or making fun of herself. Putting her in this situation, I think, is, is terribly, it's an erratic act. Uh, so then she also is on, uh, t- uh, I guess today, on Charlemagne, Charlemagne the God on Tuesday, uh, which is today. She is, uh, now that one, I mean, like, again, she's, they're obviously worried about young black male voters. They think maybe this is a good place to go. But again, Charlemagne can push you in directions that aren't always comfortable. We've seen this with previous candidates who have gone down roads with Charlemagne and, and, and he's put them in uncomfortable positions. He seems to be more about wanting a good show and a good interview than some political agenda. Um, then you have uh, Kamala Harris. This one I really don't understand. Going to sit down with Brett Baer. We mentioned we'll go live uh, after uh, this interview on youtube.com uh, slash Studios America. Go there, click the bell for notifications. Follow the show. You'll know when we go live. We'll give you a complete review of everything that happens in the interview and kind of perspective. Where did she lie? Uh, what were the big moments? Uh, you know, it, they've been fun to go through with people. Um, so check that out, youtube.com slash Studios America. But the big thing is, and I mentioned this at the beginning, you can look at polls and you can see a trend. You can look at data behind the scenes and find some uh, indicators. But to me, the biggest indicator that Kamala Harris is losing this election right now is the way she's acting. This, we had a countdown of how many, uh, or count up, I guess, of how many days Kamala Harris would, uh, went from the last interview she did, which was the night of the debate where Joe Biden uh, got destroyed. And then she came on and said he did really well. And actually he's great. And he's, he does not have any cognitive, cognitive problems. Um, th- from that point, I think it was something like 80 something days before she did any interviews. And that, you know, you, you had stuff like, um, you know, dual interviews with Tim Walls. You had local news interviews, occasionally a puff interview on some, you know, really friendly source. And it kept going and going and going that way. And, and we said we gave the campaign credit at the time. It obviously is the smart thing to do when you have Kamala Harris as your candidate. She's very limited. She can't do these things. She screws up every single time she tries. Just don't give her the opportunity. You can't strike out if you're not at bat. And the bottom line is people hopefully will just kind of fill in the idea of a competent candidate in their minds and say, well, I don't really like Donald Trump that much, so I'll vote for Kamala. And that happened for months, even after they did a couple of interviews. There was a couple that she did. Um, She still avoided most of the opportunities. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, last week, she just starts going almost everywhere. Friendly sources, now even places like Brett Baer on Fox News. And Brett Baer, again, like... You know, there are a lot of shows you can do. You can even do some. And he's not an adversarial show, per se. He's a news guy. He is a straight journalist. And so and he understands the conservative perspective. And I'm sure we'll ask questions from it. But also we'll know how she's going to respond in advance. He's not going to be surprised by her comebacks. He's going to watch the time she's addressed these issues before. He's going to know what she's going to say, and he's going to have a follow-up with a sound clip or a quote. You saw uh, Shannon Bream do this to Tim Walls the other day, uh, to devastating effect. The fact that you're going to put—I mean, and Walls, I think, is—and I, I mean this with very little compliment in mind, but, like, is probably slightly better at this stuff because he, at least he kind of understands Midwestern values a little bit. He understands that type of voter, even though he's obviously very liberal. She doesn't even understand those people. So to put her in a position like this is nuts. It's crazy if you're trying to win. It's crazy. And if, if you think you're winning, you don't do this. These are not the actions of a campaign that believes it's ahead. These are the actions of a campaign that is looking increasingly desperate and worried. Now, yes, Democrats worry about these things all the time, as do Republicans. For some reason, the media thinks only Democrats worry about their uh, their candidates. Believe me, Republicans worry just as much. Um, But there are indications here that something's happening inside the campaign that's making them change gears. What is causing this change? I'm obsessed with knowing the answer to this because it's, it's a massively important thing. So let's go through some of the possibilities here real quick. First of all, there's a lot of pressure that built up. And perhaps it's just public pressure, right? 
We uh, certainly said this a million times, but the, the public in general did as well. Why isn't she doing interviews? Why is she hiding? Why is she not doing the basics that a campaign and a candidate normally do when running for president? Why isn't she in front of the camera, uh, you know, uh, enunciating her freaking vision for the country? What are your proposals? What do you think? You're, she wasn't even doing speeches for a long time, outlining the possibilities. Is it possible that just enough public pressure built up and they started saying, crap, we got to get out there and we got to do something? That's, that's, that's option number one. Option number two, it was a planned shift in strategy. There is a possibility that the way they looked at this, uh, maybe outlined at the very beginning, we only have three months. Um, we're going to wind up with a real um, uh, uh, boom or a little boomlet uh, compared to just being not, you know, Joe Biden. Our voters are going to be excited. It's we're not Joe Biden. They'll give us a nice burst. We'll go through that. We'll have we'll name a VP. We'll, we'll uh, have a, a convention that'll go well. Hopefully you we do well in a debate. We'll get a bunch of little booms. And maybe we don't need to really do this. But at some point, you know, later in the campaign, we'll get into policy. It'll take us some time to set all that stuff up. I know we're a big operation. We've got a lot to do, a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we didn't get a head start on. We're going to do all this and then we're going to shift strategy, uh, you know, with about three weeks, four weeks left before the election. Again, I'm not even convincing myself on this, but I'm giving you the possibility that maybe they just planned it this way. We'll keep the media schedule light at the beginning. Let her, you know, maybe study up on these issues, maybe get prepared a little bit, uh, get past the debate, and then we'll start doing interviews. Perhaps. Not really thinking that one's that likely. Number three. Maybe there's some regret over the basement strategy. Maybe there's a little regret over this. Maybe they're saying, you know what? People aren't really viewing this all this positively. Maybe uh, we, you know, we think we can get away with two months of a basement strategy, but three or four, can we really do that? Maybe not. Maybe they're looking at their polling and they're saying, hey, people, this issue that has been obviously mostly talked about by conservatives is starting to reach the overall uh, community. We're seeing it in voter numbers. They, they think we're hiding away too much. They think we're, um, you know, maybe slinking away too much. And uh, they want uh, the, the candidate to actually be known. They want to know what they stand for. I mean, there's a lot of people in poll after poll after poll say, I have no idea what she stands for. Uh, you notice the, um, the approach that Kamala had today. We don't have to play the clip, but we played it on radio today where she's basically out there saying, like, why are they hiding Donald Trump away? What's he hiding? Now, that is obvious projection, right? I mean, they, that's what they did with Joe Biden and that's what they did with Kamala Harris. Now, all of a sudden, they're saying that uh, they're trying to bring that up as an issue. It's probably because they know it's their weakness. Right. And they're trying to say, well, if we attack him on this, maybe we can get that back to 50 50 where they people think both of us are being hit or something like that. So that's possible. I think it's increasingly likely. Uh, number four is donor pressure, different than public pressure, but in some ways matters more. If you have a bunch of donors, billionaire types, you know, multimillionaire types, bundlers, big activists, uh, big, you know, uh, union heads, people like this that are hearing from their union members say, hey, uh, what's going on? She's not even doing interviews. This does happen behind the scenes. A lot of times campaign strategy can change because donors say, look, if you're not going to go out there and try to win this thing by doing interviews and getting out there and getting in front of the public, my next million dollars might not be coming. Enough of that builds up. It's possible that they're reacting to sort of, to sort of that pressure. Now, my impression of Democratic donors is they're very much ends justify the means. They don't really care what you say or what you believe. As long as when you get that power, uh, you use it to benefit them. That is the typical way this works. But it is possible that they think just because it's going to cause her to lose because she's running a basement campaign, it's possible they could pressure her into changing that strategy. But the shift in gears being this dramatic uh, I mean, uh, it would take a lot of pressure from donors. Next up is, uh, inter this is, I would say, the most widely believed one. Internal polling and indicators show trouble. And I think this is true. Now, at least this is part of it. If everything was going really well, uh, they would not change strategies like this. I think there is, there was a, a narrative in their minds, which they, I'm sure, knew was not definite, but did think was possible, that they would get in, they get all this positive energy just for not being Joe Biden. They maybe have a good debate, have a good convention, and they get a five or six point lead and it would just stay like that because there's enough people who don't like Donald Trump uh, and that might just be enough. I think there was a narrative in their head that said 
that is a one and two, one and three type of situation. Could happen, and if it happens, we never have to turn on the interview machine. We'll only turn it on if things look rough for us, and we may be there behind the scenes. Again, one thing about internal polling is it basically shows eventually the same types of things that public polling show. Public polling is a little slower, though, that you get a head start with private polling because you could take all, all the polls, you get them, you see them that day. If you think about the process of a normal poll, it goes out there, it's out there in the field for maybe four or five days. It comes back at the end of that. There's one or two days maybe of processing and writing articles and all that stuff. And then it finally comes out. You're talking about a lot of voters who were talking about their position a week ago. You can do this much more aggressively when you have millions and millions and millions of dollars to spend on polling. And you could also get a little more nitty gritty, right? Like you can get down and, and really drill down as to do people think she's not doing enough interviews, get those specific answers. Where are weaknesses? Oh, it's with younger men. It's with black men. It's with, you know, you can see these groups. So there are advantages. Obviously, the, the private polling, if you get somebody who's good and isn't just kissing your ass and feeding you the positive information, can be really beneficial. Uh, because of the almost unlimited resources you have to utilize it. This is also super PACs do this. What they'll, what they'll do is they'll spend millions of dollars on polling over a cycle, and they'll just post it on some unknown page on the website that the public doesn't see because they can't coordinate with the campaign. They can't send it to them directly. But what they can do is just post it on the web. And sometimes those things get, you know, people find out about them. Bottom line is a lot of this polling can be better. And if they're seeing these indicators, they're saying, okay, we got to shift gears. We're going to lose. If we don't do this right now, we're going to lose. And that might be the situation they're in. Those are the vibes I have right now. And that is not worth much of anything, what, what I'm feeling, what you're feeling. Vibes don't really tell the story. No elections are won on vibes. But that is kind of how it feels right now, doesn't it? I mean, it feels like certainly we are seeing the data tighten a little bit. But not necessarily telling the story that Donald Trump is a shoe in to be president of the United States. It's telling, it's, it's telling us it's going to be a close election. So what are they seeing maybe in addition to what we're seeing? So that's, I think, the most common belief. And the last one I'll put out here is this. Are, is there a situation where her handlers are saying, Kamala, just stay out. People don't want to hear from you. So shut up. Don't do any interviews. And she's getting to the point now where she's pushing back. There's a story that Glenn told me very, very early on when I started working with him. Glenn Beck, of course, of the Glenn Beck program. And he said, you know, he's walking me through, um, you know, he was teaching me the industry, frankly. And one of the stories he told me was about a TV guide, uh, uh, issue of TV guide about the Cosby show, Bill Cosby. And it was, there was no rape references in it. So this, this, is, this, is, uh, this is pre when people uh, had a negative opinion of Bill Cosby. And uh, it was back from like the 80s when the Cosby show was starting up. And basically he said, uh, you know, I had done other projects before and I had tried to fit into other people's like idea of what I wanted to do or what would work. And with the Cosby show, I just, I'm just going for it on my own. I'm going to fail or succeed on my own merits, but I'm going to be able to control it. It's going to be on me if we fail. And he went on, of course, to great success. Now, I will tell you the end of that story is I looked after telling, uh, hearing about this for years to find the issue of uh, of TV Guide where this happened, and it didn't happen. Uh, he, I don't know what story he mangled, but it wasn't, I, we, there was no issue of TV Guide where this actually occurred. I bought every single one with Bill Cosby on the cover. That probably looked really, really weird in retrospect to whoever, whatever eBay person I bought them from. The bottom line, though, was uh, that that's a thing I think is real. If you care about your vision for the world, if you care about your campaign, Kamala Harris does not have another shot at this. This is it. She's not getting the nomination in 2028. It's not a thing. This is it. She either becomes president or she's done forever. Okay, that is her arc. And she knows this. So she may very well be saying, look, I've done this your way. I'm not ahead. You said I could be six points ahead by now. I'm not ahead. We're tied or I'm behind. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to put myself out there and I'm going to win this thing on my own or I'm going to lose it on my own. I'm pushing back. You can't control me. I'm got Kamala damn Harris over here, and I am going to go out there, and I'm going to make my way either for the best or for the worst. Really possible that that conversation has happened behind the scenes. This happens a lot with candidates. I think if you, uh, when the history books are written over the Biden campaign, you will find that that particular conversation happened behind the scenes there as well, over and over again. I think people said, Joe, you can't go out there, you can't do this anymore. And he said, damn you, I'm Joe Biden. And I, I, my name, middle name is Robinette. And I'm gonna go out, any man with a name Robinette can go out there and 
Uh, it seems like maybe do a lot of different things. I don't know. Not, nothing that sounds good, but possibly. Anyway, you get the point. The point is that uh, Dave, that uh, that this sort of this sort of thing that's going on with uh, with uh, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden behind the scenes is the type of thing that a big a big ego can take over in these moments. And as much as we can man- micromanage what the campaign should and should not do at the end, I mean, how many times have we seen this with Donald Trump? You know, they say, hey, just stay on message. And he goes and he says what he wants. Like the camp, the candidate still gets to do what they want to do. It's still them. It's their ass on the line. And they get to make their own decisions. So that might be what's going on with Kamala Harris. The end of the story of, he- of this whole uh, nightmare for them and I don't think this, this week's going to go well for them. I think we're going to get a lot of good material to be talking about over the next few days. These are not good decisions made by a campaign in sober times. Any competent campaign running at uh, some sort of peak efficiency level would not be making decisions like that, putting a bad candidate out in front of the American public with three weeks before an election over and over and over again. The truth is something's gone wrong. Something's broken. We don't know what it is. It could be one of those options. Maybe it's something I'm not thinking about. But there's a lot of problems in the Kamala campaign. And if this continues to spiral, we might be seeing a Trump victory, maybe, and maybe one that's a little larger than we think it could be. Back in a second. So if you ever said, I wish this bag under my eye would just go away, if that sounds like you every morning, you're not alone. Bags and puffiness under the eyes are a problem for millions of American men and women until now. Yes, GenuCell has got a serum with plant stem cell technology for under the eye bags and puffiness. Susan from New Jersey wrote, I've been using GenuCell for a couple of months and the puffiness around my eyes is gone. Even the crow's feet and small lines have disappeared and haven't come back. I love your product. I use it under my eyes, around my cheekbones, and on my eyelids. Sure, you can have surgery to look younger. That's possible. But why would you do that when you have GenuCell? With its immediate effects, you can see results in the first 12 hours or your money back. They guarantee it. Order now. Save big on GenuCell's complete skincare package for a limited time. This is uh, GenuCell bags for puffiness treatment, uh, immediate effects. It's all at 70% off. So you can try the best skincare in the world for yourself, completely risk-free, right now at GenuCell.com slash stew. GenuCell.com slash stew. Order right now. Get an extra discount at checkout and free shipping. It's G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash stew. GenuCell.com slash stew. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man, man. And I'm man enough. I'm man enough to enjoy a barrel-proof bourbon. Neat. Man enough to cook my steak rare. Man enough to deadlift 500, then braid the out of my daughter's hair. You think I'm afraid to rebuild a carburetor? I eat carburetors for breakfast. I ain't afraid of bears. That's what bear hugs are for. I'll tell you another thing I sure as I'm not afraid of. Women. I'm not afraid of women. I'm not afraid of women. They want to control their bodies? I say go for it. They want to use IVF to start a family? I'm not afraid of families. They want to be childless cat ladies? Have all the cats you want. Woman wants to be president? Well, I hope she has the guts to look me right in the eye and accept my full-throated endorsement. Because I'm man enough to support women. Man enough to know what kind of donuts I like. Man enough to admit I'm lost, even when I refuse to ask for directions. Man enough to not ban young women from reading Little Women. Or one of those pants books that the sisters like. I'm man enough to raw dog a flight. It sucked. Not worth it. I'm man enough to be emotional in front of my wife. In front of my kids. In front of my horse. I'm man enough to tell you that I cry at Love Actually. Goodwill Hunting. West Side Story. That and Predator. And I'm sick of so-called men domineering, belittling, and controlling women just so they can feel more powerful. That's not how my mama raised me. I love women. I love women who support their families. Women who decide not to have families. Women who take charge. And I'm man enough to help them win. Holy crap, what an adventure that commercial is. It's amazing. Uh, men for Kamala, real men for Kamala. Uh, talking now to Dave Landau, real man, a comedian and host of Normal World right here on Blaze TV. Were you convinced, Dave, to vote for Kamala after that, watching that ad? I was. I liked all the real men. I liked the guy <laughs> sitting like this on the end of the truck, how yes. a man sits. Just, just how a man sits. Yeah, it's just going like, I'm a real man. Mm-hmm. You can tell they're all improv actors. Like, the first guy looks like he just took off a leather face mask. Yes. <laughs> 
And then the guy with the beard, it's like he just finished his manifesto and he was mailing <laughs> nail bombs to the post, post office. It's unbelievable. Like uh, you were saying, like you couldn't write that better. Yeah, like if you were just wanted something that you would design that came from the Kamala Harris campaign to mock the Kamala Harris campaign and you came up with that exactly, no differences, you'd be really pleased with yourself. You'd be like, I really nailed it. <laughs> like I hit everything yeah. to make this the most unappealing commercial ever. And you look like, what's a real man? Okay, he's on a weight bench. Clearly there's a cowboy, a guy who's also <laughs> a cowboy on the end of a truck. Yes. Another cowboy with a donkey. Yes. Like every profession in that seems to be cowboy <laughs> except for black weightlifter. Black weightlifter, which is a profession. Yeah, right, apparently. He's just in his garage. He's yeah. just like, I like that. That one, too. Like, he's like the one guy who looks like a guy yes. in the entire thing. Which is funny. And then they, they talked about someone went through their backgrounds and found out that he's like a bisexual like actor who's been in like nu done nu male nudes and all. <laughs> like, it's, like they, could, they couldn't find like six there has to be six adult males yes. that live relatively normal, uh, heterosexual, <laughs> boring lifestyles that they could have put in this ad. No, I, I don't. They could have, and what's amazing is he's the straightest one in the yes. ad. Yes, oh yeah. Like, By far. Like that's <laughs> one they far. dig up, and he's the only manly man. Yeah. It, Everybody else is a pair. And then Raw Dog. We were talking about that. Yeah, wait, like, what does that mean? Raw Dog of Flight? We like, thought it was, you know, intercourse. That's what, I, that's what I've always <laughs> thought. Condom. But uh, yeah, it's uh, we just learned it's where you wear no headphones, no, you have no pillow, no movie, no, you don't read a book, you just stare forward. Like a, a serial killer? Like, Correct. <laughs> like a sociopath would yes. do. Like Steve Buscemi yeah. <laughs> in Con Air driving through a state wearing a woman's head as a hat. <laughs> yeah. That's what that guy's capable of. So it's like they all look like they all look like either murderers or black weight straight black weight weightlifter, and he's yeah. acting. Yes, and he's acting, I, and they're all. It's funny because I guess it comes from like one of Jimmy Kimmel's writers or something was like the person who produced this. Wow. Which again, like I, I'm not a huge Kimmel fan necessarily, like right. you know, but like. A lot of talent in LA, like a lot of talent in Hollywood, you should be able to do better than this. <laughs> well, yeah, no? you should be able to get a few people together to write a commercial that actually is for her. But now that I know it comes from one of his writers, it has to be somebody like, do you think we can just get away with this? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, maybe, it right? Has, it has, because it, it feels like a troll. It does. Especially the this guy. <laughs> the guy sitting like that. The guy sitting right? on the end of a truck. With his legs crossed, and he's like kind of propped up strange. It looks like the only time he doesn't sit with his legs crossed is when he's sitting to pee. Exactly. Yeah, he's he's which one. Still. <laughs> That's it. Still, it's iffy. I right. can see him doing that. <laughs> so I, it's probably how he sits in a urinal sometimes. Right. <laughs> I feel like he's not very discriminate. He doesn't discriminate where he goes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, probably right. So. I mean, this is a dumb question, but does this work on anyone? Is there anyone who looks at this and like, you know, I was on the fence, but now that I saw that guy with his legs crossed, I think I'm voting for Kamala. Yeah, uh, Trump supporters. Right. It works for Trump supporters. It yes, it not does. Not vote for Kamala. It does. It's, there's so many things like y that you look at now, because I know people that are like, you know, feminists and everything, and they can't deny now that she's trying way too hard. Yeah. Like the voice itself. That she changed. I think she's pandering so hard she doesn't even know she's doing an impression of people in the area she's in. Yes. And then you see something like this, and it just shows it's the biggest disconnect imaginable. It's like she is is, is an impressionist. Yes. She goes and like is doing like corporate gigs where she's like customizing the performance for like it's very strange. And she comes off like the annoying drunk girl. Yeah. Who you're just like, could you get away from me? I don't think you're appealing. <laughs> right. She's like, no. <laughs> you're like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's a, and I feel like it's an it's a, there's this effort like. They, they also came out this week and said, hey, we want to win over black male voters, so we're going to legalize weed. Right. Like, that is like, can you imagine if, I mean, I could see David Duke maybe coming out with that proposal, <laughs> but what is going on? Well, she did put up David Duke numbers when it came to imprisoning black people for weed. <laughs> yes. I mean, you got to admit that. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, but that is the, especially her, because it's like, I've sent so many people away for this, I'm now going to make it legal. It's like, well, you were the biggest problem problem for a long time. Right. But she lies about everything. I mean, she's a politician, you expect it, but she's not good at it. Like, at least be good at it. <laughs> right. Like, at least lie to my face Take like you care. Take some time with your craft. Right. Right. You know, a politician should do. Yes, I think so, too. I, they, there's this real effort, though. They're trying to win men. They're realizing uh, something has happened. 
they've realized that they're <laughs> this is not going well, especially with male voters. So they're rolling out. One of the things they're doing is rolling out Tim Walls as this like manly man. Like right. if I don't know if you know this, but he's uh, he fishes and he hunts. Those are the only two things I know about Tim Walls. Yes. Um, they they released this video with him trying to load his gun. I think it was incredibly authentic. Do we have this? <laughs> Governor, what kind of gun is it? This is a Beretta A400. I brought, I bought it when I was shooting a lot of uh, trap. <laughs> what? Because it has a kind of their patented thing, a kickoff. So when you get old, yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt your shoulder as much. <laughs> now, he, that looked like he had never even attempted to do that before. Like he took it out of the box three seconds before this and then attempted to load it in person. Well, and I also feel that if you know that many school shooters, one of them should have trained you <laughs> at some point on how to do that. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look, it looks, if I gave my kid a BB gun, yeah. he would know how to load it. I feel like he would just instinctually, yeah. he's, he, it looks like an earnest movie. And you're just like, please don't shoot anybody with this, but it's going to go off in the air yeah. and then on the ground and then hit his friend. It, it's it, he's there's no way he hunts. Right. There's a moment where I'm I really think he's about to look down the barrel for the bullet. Right. Like, is it down there? Like, I, I, I'm concerned. <laughs> this guy was in the military. He's a black circle, like a Bugs Bunny <laughs> cartoon. Because that's what it comes off of. Everybody keeps calling him Elmer Fudd. Yeah. And it does come off that way. Yeah. If he's just going to stare down at Dude, I he how is he military? Imagine doing that with a drill sergeant yelling at you. Right. Like <laughs> you'd be cleaning every latrine. Yeah. You're doing like two hundred push ups. Easy. And they and they, they have this is like a, a real, I don't know, theory of the race from the Kamala Harris perspective. Yes. Like they think they keep doing this thing like uh, Doug Emhoff is another one. They keep bringing him out there and they're saying he's redefining masculinity. Yes. <laughs> and I would say, first of all, that is the greatest low key insult to a man of all time. Hey, like, hey, you're redefining masculinity is not something you should take positively if someone says it to you. No. Right? Like, <laughs> you're, you're so different than what we think of traditionally as a man. Yeah, when, we, when we think of men that take care of business, we don't think of you. Oh, no, you're totally redefining it. But like, this is not a. That's so true, isn't it's it? Just right? an insult. It's just an insult. Is it the same Kimmel writer? Yeah, it might be. Yeah. It might be like there's just some conservative guy in there trolling everybody. Yeah. Um, uh, is there a uh, like? I mean, because Emhoff in particular yes. has had a couple of issues in his past, Dave. Correct. It's hard to really say you're a feminist when you've hit so many women. <laughs> right. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. But it's hard allegedly. to say, like, yeah. oh, no, I'm on the side of women in the same way that a pimp is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're improving their economy. Right. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, <laughs> no. I look, I'll hang on to all the money. Right. <laughs> You'll just give what we say you can have. It's free His banking. En exactly. Yeah. Mm. Their entire platform is basically pimp America. We'll keep it all <laughs> and we'll give you what you need. Yeah. Yeah, right. And I'll hit you. Yeah, that is, that's like Kamalonomics in a nutshell. Exactly. It's, and it's just like a pimp. It's yeah. exactly. Her entire thing is pimponomics. I like that. Um, <laughs> uh, also, you know, again, everybody makes mistakes. Uh, things happen. Not n typically, though, you have a person who's supposed to be the, the, the face of masculinity that's, you know, knocking up his nanny. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Like, this is tradition. Like, this is the type of thing I feel like a Kamala Harris would be like aghast at if some Republican politician did it. Well, they would go at a Republican politician so hard. But they, we've seen that, too, where you look at masculinity. I'll say Arnold Schwarzenegger certainly came off <laughs> like more of a man when he knocked up his nanny. Yeah, that's true. Maybe this is the, this, this is the one masculine thing they have. But, yeah, eventually, you know, you have to acknowledge the fact that it, uh, a Mexican kid who looks just like Arnold Schwarzenegger keeps walking <laughs> through the house. Just a jacked eight-year-old yeah, is walking around. <laughs> like, you see him on the beach. He's like, you know, he's like 6'10". His mom's this tall. <laughs> you know, she's keeping this secret. And eventually they had to go like, Arnold. Arnold, are we going to mention that uh, <laughs> the, the Mexican kid is kind of your doppelganger? Yeah, kind of a problem. Right. And no, they would go at anybody hard and try to take them down. And also, yeah, it seems, why the nanny? Yeah, I, no, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with nannies. It's just they never seem to be able to meet anybody outside of their own home. You're right. Like no social skills. Yeah. No ability to go out into public. They're just like, well, I was home. She was. My wife does everything. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just, availability, I think, is the answer to this, yeah. which is, I mean, it's just pure laziness. It is. It is. Like, go out, go, go to a bar, go figure something else out. To do it inside your home like that. 
It's like Paul Pelosi getting caught with so many <laughs> random men. You oh, feel, you those know. are just coincidences. Sure, I mean, That's it's just, just a coincidence. coincidence. Sure. Just like her stock trading habits. She just happens to get them all right. <laughs> it's just coincidence. Yeah, that's true. Some people would call it a crime and look into it. Other people just call it good betting. Yeah, yeah that's right. And she, that's... she just happens to, you know, she has a, a really unique sixth sense for success. Yes. Mm-hmm. I love that every time, <laughs> like Paul Pelosi, like if he's T-boned in his car <laughs> or inside his house getting hit with a hammer, there's always some <laughs> random person there yeah. who's a guy. And there's no real reason they should be connected at all unless he's driving 15 miles from the house to pick someone up <laughs> right <laughs> which does seem like, he's be... the only one that goes out of out of his house because he knows she won't be there right yeah, very very true there's a lot of disturbing questions we have do you have a uh, before we go do you have a vibe as to like where we stand in this election I honestly feel that it's Trump, but I have a lot of people telling me the other way. But I think she's so unappealing, and I've heard from so many people that they don't like her. And I think she's, <laughs> so she, I was, you know, I was talking a few minutes ago to my friend, she's spiraling. It feels like that, right? Yeah. Like, because I, I, you know, I look at this stupid data all the time, and, and like, you can find trends in there that like favor Trump, but you could also get yourself to, to get doubtful about it too. Oh, yeah. But the way she's just awkwardly changing tactics, like, jamming the car in reverse while going 65 miles an hour forward. <laughs> it just feels like they feel desperate right now. That's the problem. And I think that I think that people are realizing that if we do go in that direction, we're in a lot of trouble because somebody spiraling's great. Especially if you're the first female president and we're on the brink of World War III. That's what you need is a, is a woman that can't manage her emotions in charge. Not that a man wouldn't. I'm just saying no, it's, it's, I, just, it's, it's iffy for the first one. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least Hillary has allegedly murdered people. Right. Like, at yeah, least yeah. She, you knew that she could. Ice, ice water in the veins. Too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She can actually, like, you know, she can stand the stress because she knows what it's like to take a life. <laughs> Once you've gone through that, right. you can go what? through anything. Any meeting is not going to throw you <laughs> off, right? No, questions aren't going to bother you. Yeah, You're on. a sociopath. <laughs> Uh, well, we're on the verge of doom, I think, is what uh, what you're bringing to the table, David. I appreciate that. Yes, that's usually my perspective. <laughs> okay, good. All right, Dave Landau, get more of that perspective about doom right around the corner on Normal World right here on Blaze TV. Uh, where are you going to be, Dave? you have uh, some shows coming up? Um, yeah, this weekend I'm going to be in Skyline at Skyline in Appleton, Wisconsin. Not the chilly place. It's a comedy club. Okay. But I'll be in Appleton, Wisconsin. And then the weekend after Tom's River, New Jersey, I'm doing a fundraiser. It's all Toys for Tots. It's on the 25th. Oh, wow. 100% goes to kids. So if you're able to come out, come on out to the show. You at least get to take a couple toys. I'm probably going to take some for my son, okay. but I won't tell them. <laughs> right. Well, he's a tot, right? Yeah, yeah he's a tot. Yeah, it's totally, fine. Totally. All right, Dave, thanks, thanks so much. Where do people get, to, uh, people get tickets on the oh, website? Uh, DaveLando.com. Okay, you're supposed to just yep. say You're supposed to say that. Like, oh, I should have said that it. up as like, yeah. Part I'm not good at self-promoting okay. All right. if you haven't been able to say <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> Dave, thanks so much, man. Appreciate Thank you. It. So Hurricane Milton made landfall uh, last week near Siesta Key, Florida, a Category 3 storm. Uh, Huge story, obviously. 16 people at least died. Two million people were without power in Florida. We have a bunch of employees who who are living in that area, had to deal with all sorts of, you know, trees down and house damage. And it was just a, you know, complete disaster. Then you had Hurricane Helene just before that. Uh, Maybe the world is actually collapsing in front of our eyes. There is something you can do, though, for you and your loved ones that have medication, uh, you know, and they have medication needs. Have it on hand when it is needed. It's a solution that thousands of people have already discovered. It's called the Jace case, and they're going to allow you to basically stock up on medication now so you're prepared for whatever comes around the corner. Uh, The Jace case is a personalized emergency kit that contains essential antibiotics and medications that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. It provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. So you fill a form out online. It's really easy. You'll have it in case you need it. There's a bunch of add-on options you can have as well. So just do this now. Get yourself prepared because you don't know what's around the corner. Jace.com. J-A-S-E.com. The code is STU. Get a discount on your order. Promo code is STU at J-A-S-E.com. All right. Uh, polling. How's it looking? We've been talking about the vibes a little bit today. What's the data actually saying? We go through, I mean, dozens of uh, polling averages and uh, uh, 
you know, prediction markets and full-blown election models to give you kind of a sense as to what the data people are saying. You could choose to believe this. You could choose not to believe it. But this is what it's saying right now. And what you're seeing, I think, quite clearly is sincere, or sincere and, and obvious momentum toward Donald Trump. Right now, Donald Trump with a 48 percent chance of winning the election. Kamala Harris at 52. This is up about six points for Donald Trump over the past couple of weeks. You might say it doesn't. I mean, I've, I'm seeing polls with Trump ahead. It is important to understand this particular measure is supposed to be slow acting. It should give you, you know, it's, it's not going to give you a, move all these averages from day to day. It's going to give you a, a sense of the, the tone and movement in the race. But I mean, you know, right now, I would say Donald Trump is right there. I mean, 48 percent in this sort of measure is basically a toss up. So that's where we are. Now, there is some conflict inside the Democratic Party. We talked about a bunch of it with Kamala Harris earlier on, but it's not just Kamala Harris related. Nancy Pelosi is saying she has not even spoken to Joe Biden since pressuring him to drop out. And like, this is really tough to see. I I remember seeing, uh, and these are, these are people were tight. Uh, Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi have been friends forever, kind of through thick and thin. And it's tough to see, like, you know, you, you hate to see, you know, a small little thing like destroying a man's legacy and, 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 th- and th- slitting his throat in the political sphere to ruin a friendship. Um, you know, it's one of those things that's really tough, tough to take. You know, I've, I've heard and, I, you know, uh, I've seen documentary footage and I, I don't think, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer's murder victims were all that thrilled with him either. So this does occasionally happen, but... Uh, sad to see. AOC is also upset with Joe Biden and his administration over their unrestrained support of the government of Israel. Now, look, is Joe Biden going to be better with Israel from my perspective than Kamala Harris? Sure. Uh, unrestrained support is not how I would, I would, I would describe it. But of course, this is AOC and she's um, not only stupid, but insane. So you understand that she's going to be wrong on this. What is interesting about this more than anything else is that this conflict continues to bubble under the surface just enough to make, again, Democrats nervous. It's hard for me to believe that they are going to go to the end of this and, and have this cause them the election. You know, this, uh, the, the idea that they weren't anti-Israel enough. They're very anti-Israel. They act that way constantly. But, you know, they support Israel a little bit more. They do treat them as an ally occasionally. I don't think Kamala Harris will do that, but that's another thing. And on the same front, the Arab American PAC has now foregone, uh, for, is going to forego the presidential endorsement. This was a, a Michigan-based group. And again, if this is going to burn the Democrats, which again, I, I'm skeptical of, but if it is going to burn them, that's probably the state it happens in, is in Michigan. We'll continue to watch that closely. Back in a second. You have a teenager who's maybe unsure what to do after high school. I mean, I, I can totally understand that, right? The world is crazy and it's impossible to understand right now. Um, there's a way you can kind of give them a good foundation. Now, you got to do that as a parent. You do that through church. You do that through education. There's a lot of ways you can do it. But there's a great new six-week life and career skills course from Praxis that might be exactly uh, what you need. Um, now, Praxis has helped uh, nearly a thousand homeschoolers and recent high school graduates launch their careers without college through their mentorship program. Now they're bringing uh, their expertise uh, to teens with their new course, Discover. Discover is a six-week self-paced course designed to equip teens with essential life and career skills, like building a professional network, making money by creating value, and developing a vision for the future. Plus, it includes a coaching call, a free resume review, and a copy of the book, Don't Do Stuff You Hate. Certainly, excellent advice. Uh, Now, for a limited time, they're offering listeners of our show a 50% discount off the course if you use the promo code STU50. you got to use that code, though. So remember that, STU50. At checkout, you'll get the Praxis course for over $300 off. It's discoverpraxis.com slash blaze. Discoverpraxis.com slash blaze. Make sure to use that code STU50 and get 50% off today. Okay, so here's what happened. Bath and Body Works ready for the holidays, ready to give you a nice winter scent to bring you into that holiday spirit. They have a new candle. It's called Snowed In, and it's got a picture of a snowflake on the outside, obviously, kind of zoomed in on a snowflake. One little problem with it, when you zoom in on a snowflake like this, it looks like KKK hoods. (laughs) So it looks like a KKK candle. You can spell candle with a K if you spell it incorrectly. Uh, They're they're pulling it off the market, sadly. (laughs) 